Hi there, and welcome to this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Well, today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm doing a DIY. I'm going to show you how to get your dongle dangling and how you can listen to police, fire, EMS, or whatever you want to for 30 bucks, as long as you've got a computer and some basic skills. So I'm going to show you how I did it and hopefully set you on the path to setting it up yourself as we talk about software defined radio or SDR. But first, here's a quick word from our great sponsor for Patriots. Prepare for those just-in-case situations with delicious and long-lasting emergency food kits from 4Patriots. These survival meals will give your family the energy they need to get through any emergency. Their survival food kits are a great combination of taste and shelf life, making them perfect for any situation. And as a special offer to the Guns Magazine podcast audience, if you go to 4Patriots.com forward slash gun mag, you'll get weekly special deals and discounts. That's 4Patriots.com forward slash gun mag. Well, welcome to the interview segment of the Guns Magazine podcast. And as I mentioned, today you get me. I guess nobody wanted to talk to me. No, that's actually not the case. The case is this is my Geek of the Week project. I got involved with this a while back and I finally made it work. And this is something I think a lot of folks will be interested in. So we're going to talk about this little thing here. It's an SDR, Software Defined Radio Dongle. That's the word, dongle. Plugs into the side of your computer and allows you to do all kinds of wondrous things. Now, this is not, this is a, a shooting podcast, not a radio podcast, but I think this is one of those things that uh, obviously the audience is very interested in self-reliance and preparedness, and this falls squarely in line with that. Now, I'll tell you my own use case and, and why this solved a big problem for me. As most folks know, I'm a retired police officer, did it for 30 years. And when I was working, obviously, I knew everything going on. When I wasn't working, though, if there was severe weather threatening or I heard a lot of sirens in my neighborhood and I wanted to know what was going on, I went and grabbed my portable police radio and turned it on. Uh, with severe weather, you could hear what the guys and gals out in the field are seeing. And sometimes they'd warn you about severe weather, tornadoes, that kind of thing that, you know, are in the immediate area. It's far better than uh, commercial TV or even the weather service because you're hearing it going inbound to those providers. So it's nice to have that uh, information at hand. And, of course, there's just the nosy factor, too. But we'll, we'll leave that there. This is, this is about being prepared and knowing what's going on in your community. So years ago. When I was a kid, and up until, well, maybe about 10 years ago, um, no, longer than that, 20 years ago, everybody had a scanner, a scanner radio that a lot of them used to put crystals in. Uh, that's going way back for some folks, but you would listen to your local police, fire, EMS, maybe the tow truck drivers, maybe the street department or the local taxi service. Um, and everybody had one of those. Uh, the old ones had the red lights that would go across the front. And uh, we all had them. We even had them in our police cars so we could hear uh, other neighboring agencies. Well, as communications technology changed, especially getting into the 21st century, that brought a lot, about a whole bunch of changes to radio communications, making it a lot better. Well, the problem is we went to what's called a trunking system. And a lot of public safety agencies and a lot of businesses now use trunking systems. Basically what that is, is a set of frequencies that everybody uses. And the, the computer, it's not even a radio anymore, it's a computer. It assigns uh, folks a channel. So if I call in on one channel, the radio slash computer says, okay, you can talk to the guy you want to talk to over here connecting at this frequency here. So it does that. You guys talk and you move on. So our own system, I think, has 10 or 12 frequencies. So there's problem number one. If you want to scan a large number of agencies, uh, you got to have a large number of frequencies. Number two is most of the communications are what they call digital. Uh, the old analog radios uh, was uh, basically it converted the waveforms of your voice into a radio signal. and that process was reversed in the other end or on your scanner. Now with digital, 
the radio slash computer changes your voice into a series of ones and o's, digital data, and it transmits that. So even if you have a radio capable of hearing 453 dot blah, 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 all you're going to hear is a bunch of <laughs> if you get the people transmitting on that channel. So we got two problems. If you're going to listen to a trunking system, you got to have a way to follow the channels and uh, follow the, the, the conversations. And you have to have a way to decode the digital voice that is being utilized. So, and there's also data, but we'll leave data out of it for the time being. So, how do we do that? Well, if you don't have a $5,000 police radio at your disposal, and unfortunately the city, uh, they wanted the radio back when I retired. So, I couldn't listen to anything going on. And, and as a retired cop, I don't care, frankly, except when severe weather is threatening, or I hear a lot of sirens in my immediate neighborhood. I, I want to know what's going on. I want to know if there's a bad guy loose, or there's a house on fire, or just exactly what's going on. So, since I've retired, what, about eight years ago, I've really been trying to figure out how I can listen to our local public safety trunking radio system. And there's an easy way to do that. You write a real big check, and you buy the proper scanner. Well, uh, the cheapest I could find is $400 or so, and, and you, the sky's the limit, of course. So there's also the problem, I didn't know that much about the various protocols that are used by these various systems, and there's a bunch of them. And my fear was, okay, I bite the bullet, I take money out of savings, I buy one of these expensive trunking scanners, and then either A, I can't get it set up because I don't know enough about it, or B, I've got the complete wrong protocol in this particular radio this flavor of radio won't uh, interact properly with whatever system I'm trying to listen to. So I've been sitting around waiting for some way to hear local police and fire and EMS communications. So I got wind of this thing called SDR, Software Defined Radio. And it's been around a little while. And basically what it does is the radio signals are converted to data by a device, in this case, our dongle. And then it's sent to a computer, literally a computer, and there's software in there that spindle folds and mutilates the signal and turn it into something you can listen to, or in the case of data, look at. So those started out, uh, it was a cutting edge technology. The military, I believe, was involved in, in developing some of that. It's really cool because an SDR radio basically can receive and transmit on virtually any frequency. Uh, that is within the physical capabilities of the device. Now, some are locked out from certain frequencies that you're not licensed for, but that's, that's a whole nother ballgame. Basically, you got a, a hard, piece of hardware and you got a computer. Well, back about 10 years ago, some, some guys with big brains discovered there's a chip in here, an integrated circuit that is, from my understanding, a European television tuner. And they discovered that besides getting European television, this chip would essentially decode virtually the entire radio frequency spectrum. So that was interesting. And then somebody realized, well, if we can have it basically change uh, uh, radio waves into uh, computer data, then we could feed it into a computer, develop software that would decode that. Uh, in terms of the various protocols it's using, and we could listen to it. So they did, and the result was these kind of dongles. And this isn't the only one. This is the most popular one. It's probably the least expensive one. And this is the, the gateway drug that most folks use to get into this. But uh, there's lots of them out there, but I would suggest for a whopping $29.95, you need to buy one of these and try it out. Now, I'll warn you, if, if your computer literacy uh, begins and ends with pushing the power button, this may be a little bit too much for you. But if you have basic computer knowledge and you can troubleshoot a little bit and you know, you know how to install software and remove software and you understand what drivers are, things like that, uh, not super high-end technical stuff. You don't need to write code or anything. But if you have a basic understanding of computers, this is very attainable for anybody. So I'm going to walk through the process of how I did this. 
and tell you what worked for me, and that should be a starting point for you. The problem is there's a zillion different flavors of radio and protocols and settings within those protocols, and computers are to the point it's almost like people. Every one of them's a little bit different in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, we've got the Windows machines over here, and we got the Linux machines over here, and et cetera, et cetera. But they're all different. So keep in mind, this is definitely a case of your mileage may vary. And as I said a couple of times, and we'll continue to say, this is what worked for me on my particular equipment. But at least there's some, uh, maybe you can use that as a guidepost if you want to go down this same path. So I bought my dongle. I, uh, I went to a website called uh, str slash uh, SDR, no, RTL, sorry, RTL-SDR, and these, and they are the folks that sell these dongles. So once you get one, uh, you plug it into the computer, you get it set up, you install the software, you go to another website to find your frequencies that you want and the protocol that accompanies those frequencies. Uh, for instance, if it's a trunking system, you got to know what kind of trunking and you got to know talk groups and et cetera. That's where it gets a little bit complicated. You need to have at least some passing uh, understanding of, of how all of it works. But once you do it, uh, it works. And I'll, I'll have to say a few weeks ago when I, I was uh, messing with this thing, I'd had it over a year and just couldn't make it work. And I finally got it to operate. Um, I could pick up commercial FM stations, but that was about it. Um, when I, I suddenly, I, I got some new software. I tried it. I was literally on the edge of just giving up. And suddenly I heard voices. And I realized the voices weren't in my head. They were outside my head. They were coming from my computer. And I recognized the voices. And, and the cool thing is, I'm good friends with our chief of police here. Uh, we came up together. The very first voice I heard on when I got SDR radio working was the chief marking off duty. And I thought, that's a sign right there. So it was pretty cool. I texted him and said, hey, I, I know you just marked off. And you sounded really tired. He's like, yeah, I had a 12-hour day and blah, blah, blah. He didn't realize I had I had reached the holy grail of of scanning. I had used a $30 piece of equipment and uh, uh, started listening to our local system. So fast forward to today, I, I can listen to pretty much anything that's going on around us. Uh, I've got uh, set up so I can lock in and lock out the fire department, the, the ambulance service. Uh, I've got uh, our uh, local helicopters. I've got, I've actually got uh, the train. Uh, I'm a train geek and I got a track here about a mile from me. I listen to the trains moving up and down. Um, I've got the state police. Uh, I've, I've got the, uh, the conservation officers programmed in. Uh, one of the big problems when I first got started, the way our system set up, you hear everybody in the state. So I was listening to the Department of Corrections transporting prisoners and et cetera, et cetera. It was really pretty fascinating. But once I got it drilled down and set up properly, I, I know who's transmitting, uh, from, you know, what group, uh, what agency, et cetera. If I knew what the individual radio uh, numbers were, I'd know who it was. I don't have that information, but that's that's how much it'll drill down. So anyway, if you want to know what's going on around you and you don't want to spend a whole big barrel of money on a scanner, this is the way to go. So uh, real quick, we're going to go change camera set up here real quick, and I'm going to uh, walk you through how we do it on the computer. Okay, we're going to get on the computer and show you how to get all this done. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to RTL slash, sorry, hyphen SDR.com. And that is uh, the mothership for working with SDR radios. Uh, there's all kinds of information here. Uh, there's some photos from a recent satellite launch that somebody's decoded with an SDR radio. But before you get, a, get ahead of yourself, let's get an SDR dongle first. So go to the store, and here's where you can buy an SDR dongle. Now, uh, 
you can buy them lots of places. You can buy them on Amazon. The problem with Amazon is there's lots of counterfeit versions. Now, that's not saying they don't work, but it's saying they may not work well or as good as the original. So, I strongly urge you, at least when you're getting started, buy them from str uh, I mean, sorry, RTL-SDR, uh, because that's what I own and no complaints. So if you go down to the bottom here, um, you can see the RTL SDR Blog V4 dongle. It's, it's, it says dongle only, $29.95. Uh, it's a little thing about the size of a thumb drive and uh, they're gonna ship that to you from China, um, but what can you do about that? Once it does get there, um, and it'll take a little while to get there, at least mine did, uh, then you got it. Uh, this is the kit I bought, actually. It's got the dongle, uh, antenna, a couple of antennas, and some antenna mounts and coax cable. For $40, $39.95, it's, it's an incredible bargain, uh, especially if you can get it working uh, to pick up trunking radio, as I did. Uh, that would have cost you four or five, six hundred dollars $600. So I'm a, a firm believer that this is your best way to go and it's got everything you need to get started. So that's rtl-sdr.com. And uh, like I said, you got questions and you wanna find out all the cool stuff, uh, that's the place to go. Also uh, point out this quick start guide. That's pretty important. It'll walk you through uh, what you need to do. It may not answer every single one of your questions, but it at least will get you knowledgeable enough to know how to go out and look for answers to your questions. So, you've got your dongle in hand. I know that sounds a little funny. You got your dongle in hand, you're ready to do it. So then you go to airspy.com and they are the makers of uh, SDR Sharp. It's sometimes written SDR, the word sharp, or just the uh, pound sign or sharp, um, if you're musical notation, that's where they get this. So you'll end up at the homepage of AirSpy and go to the download tab and it's very simple you just download the software defined radio package and that should have what you need and something else you probably want is the sdr sharp big book in english download that that's a pdf and that's another great resource that will get you going on that so now you've got your dongle you've got sdr sharp software install it on your computer. If you've got it installed, and you will end up with something that looks like this. All right, when you open SDR Sharp, this is the basic screen you'll get. Uh, I'll explain the parts here real quick. You've got the uh, frequency uh, graph of what's going on, and down here, you have what is called the waterfall display. And basically the waterfall display is a, a graphic representation over time of what you're seeing up here. Up here is real time, down here is history. So over on this side is some uh, uh, setup information you'll need uh, to get the uh, SDR processing signals properly. And then you got a frequency manager over here. So mine's plugged in, it's ready to go. I'll hit play and you should hear the local National Weather Service NOAA weather radio. All, they call it all hazards radio now. Here we go. Midnight and Wednesday. Partly cloudy with a 20% chance of rain. Lows in the mid 40s. As you can see, lower 60s. the uh, frequency here, I can zoom in just a bit. And you'll see the graph. The water fall display down below reflects what's going on with that. So that's a good way to know if you've got it set up right is uh, in your area there's almost has to be a NOAA weather radio so you should be able to get it. Uh, another good way to do that is broadcasting stations. I'm going to go to my local, my most favorite local radio station, which is WFBQFM 94.7. We'll click on that. Couldn't have scheduled that any better if I tried. 
So we're going to zoom out. So, from there, you're all set and ready to do whatever. If you're going to listen to a simple type radio system where it's uh, radio to radio, uh, kind of uh, one way and back, uh, this will work fine. You can set it up to, uh, there's plugins that'll let you set it up as a scanner. And uh, if you want to listen to aircraft or uh, FM business band, uh, if the local police, fire, or EMS in your area uses a uh, simpler type of radio system, should be able to hear that. You can also listen to amateur radio and all kinds of frequencies. And as I mentioned, you can really get esoteric with it and start to grab satellite information. And uh, a very popular thing is what's called ADSB data. It's uh, data that aircraft send down, and that's how they determine location, speed, altitude, all that. You can grab it. Um, you can also even grab their uh, what's called ACARS, which is basically the text message system that's built into aircraft. So I've not done any of that yet, but one of these days I probably will. So that is SDR Sharp uh, Studio. This is version one. And that's uh, it's not super intuitive. It's not uh, it's not just a plug and play kind of thing, especially regarding the setup. But if you read the uh, quick start guides and look a little look around, uh, understand a little bit more about it, it'll work for you just fine. So let's get out of that now, and we're going to go to uh, what's called SDR trunk software. Now this is written in Java. Uh, if you don't know computers, that won't mean a thing to you, but there are several different software uh, setups that will listen to trunking radio. So this is the one that worked the best for me out of the box. So if you have a Windows computer, uh, this will probably work for you. But again, I can't, I can't promise because every computer is different. But we're going to try SDR trunk. And first thing, you'll see a bunch of screens here that... I have no idea what they do. Okay, it's going to start channels. And the same kind of thing, you got a frequency display up here, you got a waterfall display down here, and we've got our control channel, which is listed in uh, radio reference. And then hopefully, here any second, somebody's going to start talking, and you can see how that will, will work out. So somebody is talking on the system, but I've got it blocked out right at the moment uh, because the way our system is set up here in my state is everybody from the state police, Department of Correction, Department of Highways, local police, local fire, they're all using it. So one of the first things I discovered is it's busy all the time, so you have to figure out a way to block that. Uh, if you, uh, I'll let you in on a little secret that it took me a while to figure out. If you go down and set up an alias for every talk group in the system, uh, we go to our playlist editor doing that. A lot of stuff running on the computer right now. Uh, first thing you do is set up channels. Then you set up aliases. And this is where I'm listening to a, an APCO 25 uh, trunking system. So. Every one of these, there we go, uh, is a talk group. And they're all assigned like EMA Ops, Fire Dispatch, uh, Fire Ops 1 through 5. That's their uh, uh, fire ground communications. Then I've got all the police stuff down here. I've also added in like State Police Dispatch, helicopters. I even got railroad police in there. But the uh, pro tip I was going to explain to you is... Uh, blocking. If you block everything out and set it to mute and then you add in individual talk groups or uh, whatever that particular radio system's flavor of how they determine who's talking and then you put the individual ones in there and set them down here to listen then you won't have to listen to everybody else. So let's see it's it's middle of the afternoon I'm going to go ahead and un uh, mute the everybody talk button 
and we should get a lot more traffic. Of course, as soon as I say that, everybody will probably be quiet. But there you see an encrypted channel. That's probably a detective or a drug investigation or something like that. There's no way you can unencrypt them. Now, maybe maybe there somebody that's really sophisticated can, but normal Earth people cannot unencrypt. But there's some disadvantages to using encrypted radios, so uh, you're probably not going to be a big concern for you. But uh, anyway, uh, sitting here watching, we'll uh, we'll watch for a few minutes and see if we can get some folks talking around. The Country Club Road, about 2800 block west, Indiana, got with trust tag, X-ray, Zebra, Robert, 548, expiring 24. 54, All right, well, that gave you a basic uh, overview of what you need to do on the computer, on the Internet. I'm not going to walk you through the individual steps of uh, installing it and making it operational because every computer is different. So, and then you get into the programming of the SDR software, and that's a whole nother kettle of fish. It's not impossible, but this is the kind of thing, don't think you're just going to sit down in an evening after dinner for two or three hours and make it work. I mean, I hope that's what happens, but uh, like I said, in my case, it took me a year to figure this out. So hopefully some of the things I've shared with you and my experiences will make that path a bit easier and help you uh, get to where you want to be. So uh, I will say again, I'm not a, a an expert on this stuff. Again, I'm a rank amateur. Um, I, I'm always open to learn things, but uh, if you just want to leave a comment complaining that you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing. You're exactly right. So I'll save you that trouble. But anyway, my goal here is so that normal earth people without spending a whole bunch of money can find out the radio frequencies around them so that they know what is going on in their own little neck of the woods. And uh, like I said, it's, it's, uh, for me, it's severe weather. Uh, I want to know if there's a tornado two miles away, because unfortunately, as, as good as the weather service and our friends in the media do, um, by the time I hear about it, uh, it'll probably be past me and I might be laying in my crawl space. So I want to know that stuff. So I, I think that's about it. Um, I've given you lots of resources. Um, this is kind of a trial and error thing, but I hope uh, you'll be able to figure it out. And if you have trouble with it, uh, maybe get a hold of a tech buddy uh, or certainly an amateur radio uh, guy or gal. They they all know about this. So, um, and the other thing, this is a definitely a gateway drug into amateur radio. I find myself uh, wanting to do more projects now. You can listen to. Uh, you can download digital pager information. I realize folks don't use pagers like they used to, but there's still quite a few of them out there. You can download those. You can download satellite photos, uh, air traffic. Uh, probably my next project will be downloading those ACARS messages that uh, planes text between them. I guess most of it is just mundane stuff, uh, flight plans and clearances and all, but uh, might be some fun stuff we'll see out there or at least until I get another Geek of the Week kind of project. But I, I felt like I wanted to share this with the audience because I think this is something that uh, is usable. It, it, it provides direct intel uh, and sit rep uh, and situational awareness. So uh, hopefully it will guide you down a path to where you can become more informed about what's going on around you. So anyway, uh, Leave me, if you've done this or uh, you, especially if you successfully done this, leave us a comment down below and I'll be interested to hear your experiences. So with that, I will shut up and go back to listening to the radio. Well, I hope this short tutorial on software defined radio or SDR intrigued you and gave you some information to start down your own path of building your system to listen to what's going on in the world around you. I think being informed is probably maybe the number one criteria for being a prepared American. Well, before we go, I'd like to remind you to please check out our great sponsor, 4Patriots. If you go to 4Patriots.com, type in forward slash gunmag, 
That will take you to a special page where you can see all the special deals and discounts exclusively for the Guns Magazine podcast audience on all your preparedness needs and supplies. That's forpatriots.com. Type in forward slash gun mag for great deals and discounts. Well, that's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. For everybody here at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat reminding you yet again, now get out there and get shooting. <laughs>